It's always a joy and a pleasure to have this opportunity each year at our Catechetical Congress to meet with that group of laity who, more than any other laity throughout the diocese, are engaged in important spiritual catechetical work. Yesterday, I, we had a meeting with the Catholic school teachers and administrators, and today, of course, all of you who are catechists in various parishes throughout the diocese, and I welcome this opportunity to commend you, to encourage you, and to thank you for the important work that you do in assisting parents in their primary duty as the educators of the children in the way of faith to aid and assist them by providing specific catechetical instruction for the young people of the diocese. And I also commend you because I know last year was one really disrupted year, and I pray that this year for all of us is, well, it has to be less disruptive than last year, but I pray that we can move through this year with great peace and tranquility, and that the work that you do is not interfered with by uh, unnecessary restrictions, regulations, rules, but if we need to have rules and regulations imposed again, then of course we will respond to those for the sake of the safety of students, for your safety, for the safety of uh, parishioners. So I commend you and, and again thank you, and thank you especially for last year, because I know that was a very, very difficult year in trying to do things remotely and online, a uh, new experience, a learning curve, so again, I commend you. Our day today is, is focused on prayer, and it might seem fairly obvious that, of course, we are people who must know something about prayer, but for you who are catechists, it is more important that you really fill your lives with actual prayer, that you be men and women of prayer, not only men and women who say prayers, because we can fall into that trap, but to be genuinely prayerful men and women. And I hope that during the course of the day and the presentations, you will receive some tips and clues about how you can deepen and enrich your life of prayer and how you can bring that renewed experience and commitment to prayer to your students in your classrooms. And so hopefully it is also practical for you in terms of your catechetical ministry. I would encourage you, because you are catechists, to take a look at the Catechism of the Catholic Church and what it has to say on prayer. Because it is very insightful and instructive for us, and its prayer is also challenging. I picked up the Catechism myself, as I often do, just to read paragraphs of it, and I started with paragraph 2725. So if you brought your Catechisms with you, Catechists should carry their Catechism with them, you could open up paragraph 2725 and read there on some of the challenges of prayer. And the Catechism is, is very clear and direct when it tells us prayer is a battle. Now, even when I read that, I thought, I, I, I read this Catechism ten different times already, and I had not paid particular attention to that word, and it is used several times in the course of that paragraph. Prayer is a battle. And it cites at least two different sources of the battle. Uh, first of all, it, it is a battle with ourselves. Uh, to contend with our own interests, our own lives, our own busyness, that we must battle against that in order to carve out and push out a space and place and time 
for prayer. It doesn't happen automatically. It must be coerced by us. It is a determinate, definite act of the will. And one of the challenges, and, and the Catechism points this out, it's not necessarily very kindly to point it out, but it, it says perhaps we are so readily distracted in prayer because we love the world more than we love God. Wow. And sometimes we have to confront ourselves and recognize that my occasional distaste for prayer and preference to do just about anything else to distract me from prayer is a choice, but it's a choice that says, I choose the world at this moment over God. Now, there are times when necessity requires that, but there are also many other times when we do have a choice between prayer and God on one hand and our own delight, pleasure, contentment on the other. And we must face that and pray ardently that we come to love God better, that we come to love God more deeply, that we come to recognize the emptiness of the world and recognize as the prophet Jeremiah, Zechariah tells us today that God is in our midst that that prophecy is fulfilled for us in the coming of Jesus. God is in our midst. He comes, He came to save us. He abides in our midst and He calls us, invites us, challenges us to turn to Him, turning ourselves away from the world for that moment, to turn to Him in prayer, in praise, adoration, thanksgiving, petition for forgiveness. The other source of battle in prayer is, of course, the evil one himself, who certainly hates prayer. He wants to pull us away from God and pull us away from God to the world and to himself to distract us. And we all are well aware of the many possibilities of distraction in prayer. They, they afflict everyone. In fact, I would go so far as to say if you are not distracted in prayer, then you're not praying rightly. <laughs> because if you're praying, you know that your enemy have a terrible accident, the devil's going to applaud you and he's going to make sure that you don't get distracted in that prayer. But if you pray for the well-being of your enemy, I guarantee you the devil does not like that prayer, and he's going to do absolutely everything in his power to distract you from that. Plant all kinds of images, and out of the blue you will find yourself thinking about strawberry rhubarb pie with ice cream, and think, where did that come from? Well, that's the way the devil works. And pretty soon you're off on this fantasy land of dessert world. Where did that come from? Well, we know where it came from. It comes directly from the evil one who plants those kinds of ideas in our heads to distract us from where we had determined and desired and acted in a way that we wanted to go to God. The devil will distract us, and those distractions are a little bit like uh, mosquitoes. You know, they just always there, and they're annoying, and they tend to pull us away. We have to engage in that battle, the battle, first of all, with ourselves and our own hearts to make sure that our hearts love God and neighbor first, as our opening prayer said, and to then battle against the evil one and continue to, continue to work against the variety of distractions that he will creatively come up with to pull us away from prayer. I trust that during the course of this day you will receive a number of wonderful tips and encouragements to pray, methods of prayer, both to enrich your own spiritual lives 
and to enrich, in a particular way, the lives of your students within your catechetical classrooms. Once again, I thank and commend and encourage you, and I pray that this day is a grace for all of you, as I can assure you it is a grace for me to be with you. Thank you.